Hello and welcome to the latest tutorial in Super Data Science's custom chart tutorial series. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to build a donut chart in Tableau. A donut chart is a variant off of a pie chart, one that gives you the ability to visualize what you normally would with a pie chart, but hollows out the center to make it look a little bit nicer and make it a lot of times a little bit easier to read. It's very popular in terms of health fitness trackers. You'll see that one showing up a lot, as well as many other popular data visualization tools. This chart is useful for showing the percent of total and the percent to plan, which is the chart we're going to be demoing today in Tableau. It bears mentioning at this point that there's been a lot of development on how to make this in Tableau, many different methods, most notably from the Tableau knowledge base from Nelson Davis, Mark Jackson, Ben Neville, Ryan Sleeper, and Annie Kriebel. The data set we're going to be using today to jump in is from Amazing Mart EU. You'll recognize this from some of our workshops that we've run. In this, we have order IDs, we have the product name, discount, sales, profit, quantity, category, and subcategory that each order belongs to. We're going to use this to visualize a percent to plan for each individual category. So coming into Tableau, we're going to connect to our data. It's an Excel file. Right here, we have Amazing Mart EU. Connect to that. We'll drag in our sheet. We have order ID, discount sales product, quantity, category, subcategory, just like we were looking for. Now the first step that we're going to do is actually come down and create a parameter. This parameter is going to be our sales goal that we're comparing to. We'll leave it as a float and we'll start by putting it at a million dollars. Now that we've created a parameter, the next thing we're going to need to do is actually create a calculated field. The basis for a donut chart, like I said, is a pie chart. And to, in order to calculate this percent of total that we're looking at, we're going to make a calculated field that calculates the difference between our sales goal of 100% and our actual sales value. So this blue chart you can think of as the blue sales that we have. And then this gray is going to be another calculated field we make that we're going to call sales remaining. Make a calculated field, we'll call it sales remaining. This is just going to be our sales goal minus the sum of our sales. Now the basis for this, again, is a pie chart. So we'll change that the chart type to pie drag our sales up to our rows, drag sales remaining over the axis so that it creates the measure names and measure values that we're looking for. Then we can drag measure names to color, measure values to angle, and we have the pie chart that is going to form the basis for our view. At this point, we'll change it to entire view and then drag category up to our columns. Now you see we have each individual category, we have their sales, and we have the sales remaining to reach the goal of the parameter that we're using for, in this case, which is $1 million. Now the parameter it really isn't necessary to create, to use as a goal every single time. And it would really only be useful if the goal was the same across all three categories. It's much better to have the goal built into your data somewhere or blended in or joined in however you want to use it. In this case though, the parameter is just a nice quick way for us to set this up for you. Now, we have our pie chart set up. And the second thing we're going to need to do in this view is actually create a duplicate copy of this using almost a dual axis chart technique and then change those to circles so then we can then create that dual axis and overlay the circles on these pie charts to create the donut effect. The thing is, when you look at creating a dual axis chart, we'll just build a chart really quick. So we have our sum of sales across category. You usually have your measure on the row shelf, hold control, drag it out, and then you have your two axes available. Unfortunately, back here in this sheet, we don't have anything on the row shelf. So what we're actually going to do is have to use a trick in order to trick Tableau into building out that second chart so that we'll be able to do this dual axis. There's many different ways to do this. Some people use number of records. I like to use something called the min one trick just because it kind of visually cues me to know, oh, hey, that's what's going on in this chart. What you do for the min one trick is you create a calculated field. Usually it's called one and then it's just given the value of one. Then what you do is you bring that measure up to your row and choose the minimum value. Now the minimum value for one is going to be one for everything. So you'll see we have this axis that's been created from zero to two. We can actually come in, right click, don't show that header. We'll up the size a little bit, to get our pie charts back. And now what we have is we have our same pie charts, but we now have them on an axis. More specifically, we have them tied to a measure that we can then duplicate. And we now have our two charts. You see over here, the marks card is adjusted to where we're showing all min1 and then the second copy of min1. Now if we come in and change this chart to a circle, get rid of measure names, get rid of measure values. This is again just from the second chart. Our first chart still has the measure names and values to give it the pie shape. 
Then we can come in, change the color to white, right click on this one, and choose dual axis. Again, staying with this second chart, we're going to grab the size and decrease it a little bit. And now we've created the donut effect that we're looking for. We can go into the tooltip real quick, get rid of that min one, which we don't really need, get rid of actually everything for now. So now we have our donuts that we're looking for. We're going to come in, right click, clean this up a little bit. We won't show the headers. We actually don't need to show this one either. Sorry, not format, but hide field data for columns. And this one, we can actually hide the header as well. So now we have our chart. We're going to do a little bit more cosmetic work. We'll come in, we'll format. We'll go over to this last option. Get rid of our grid lines. Get rid of our zero lines. And now we have our three charts across the view. We're going to come in next, and we want to label each of these. So we're going to drag category down to label. Notice I dragged it in on the first instance of min1, or in other words, the pie chart that we're working with. For me personally, I like seeing the category up top. So if we put it in the middle and then put it on top using vertical, we now have our label that we're looking for. We can also come in and up the size a little bit and put it up to 16, make it bold. And coming down here to our circle, we can actually show what we're looking for. We can actually choose what our label is, sorry. And in this case, we're looking for that percent of total. So the percent of total is going to have to be a calculation. So we'll come in, we'll call this percent of total. This is going to be our sum of sales divided by our sales goal. Now real quick for me, I like setting the formatting before we drag it out. So the default properties, number format, change this to percentage. We'll start with one decimal point. Now if we drag that to label, it shows up automatically using tables alignment. In this case, we're going to sure, want to make sure it stays in the center for both of them. And then we can come in, make it bold if we'd like, up it to whatever percentage we'd like. And there we have our donut chart. You see, we have each individual category. We have furniture, office supplies, technology, and then we have their percent to plan or percent of total. Percent of total is a poor name in this case. So we're going to go rename this to percent to plan. Sorry about that. So we have a percent to plan. We can then come in and clean things up a little bit. So rather than showing the category min one and sales, we can come into our tooltip up here. We don't need actually sales is good to have. We don't need the min one. The category is kind of self-explanatory. Clean that up. And now we have our sales and our sales remaining, and then our percent of total that we're working with. So this is a donut chart. Works really well, and it provides great insight on, especially on this kind of KPI percent plan when you're really just looking to build up to 100%. Blue orange is Tableau's default. A lot of times people will use a blue gray on this. I really like how that looks. I mean, it's similar to this example we were using earlier. So you can make that blue gray, but you really have full flexibility to use whatever you'd like right here. You can make it as crazy as you want. You could go pink and teal. <laughs> but for me, I'd stick with the blue gray. Now, there's something to be said about this chart, though. This chart works really well when you know you have something varying between 0 and 100%. But what happens if all of a sudden your percent of sales goes over 100%? So now you're going to see why we use the parameter. Let's change our sales goal to only 250,000. You'll see immediately that all of our charts have updated, which makes sense, but all of our sales are over 100%. The problem is we're still stuck using these two dimensions because we had our 823,000, but then it's actually negative sales remaining between the goal and what we actually sold. So now this chart loses some of its effectiveness because it's not actually showing the value. It's This one is showing 100%, 200%, and another 55%. This one goes three times around. I mean, it, I mean, it's difficult, it's running into issues, and so it's one of the limitations of a donut chart. Go back to that million. So again, this looks really good. It's a great use case and I've used it before. But there's another chart that can be really helpful to use. And that is a bullet chart. So we come here, this is a bullet chart. A bullet chart is a way to again show the sales and sales goal, and it's one that's built in to Tableau Show Me. 
So it's right down here, a bullet graph. What you do is you just select two measures, click on one, click on, and then hold control, click on the second one. And now you see we have bullet graphs available. We have a bullet graph. I'll explain it in a second. We'll drag out category. Now we have our three categories. And then we're actually gonna need to right click on the axis down here and swap our reference line fields. And now you'll see for this chart, we have our percent to plan, just like we had before. Oops, I'm gonna drag this out real quick. So here's a comparison of these two. We have our percent to plan, 63.9. Then we have our goal out here, the million that we're looking for. But we also have a little bit more information on this bullet chart. These background shadings show us 60% and then 80% of our goal. So you see these labels pop up, 60% of the sales goal, 80% of the sales goal. Tableau put these in automatically for us. Thankfully, it's a really nice feature for them. And then we have our sales goal out here. Again, if you had individual sales goal, this reference line would update. So you could have a reference line here, here, and here. But it really depends on the data that you're using. The important thing about a bullet chart is the amount of information that it provides as well as the flexibility that it gives you. So if you look right here, you can see we're over 60% visually, but we're under 80%. You can see that rather than this one where it's kind of an estimate if you're between 60 and 80 or if you're maybe to 70. Then the other thing about it is if we do what we did earlier and drop this to 250,000, then you'll see that our charts update and you can see exactly how far above your goal are. So in this case, we know that we're crushing it in all three categories. So again, just a quick comment on best practices. If you're looking in progress towards a goal, really the bullet chart is the best chart that you're looking for. If you are only gonna move up to 100% and never go over, then the donut chart does give you a viable option. And again, it's a popular view out there, so it's not necessarily the wrong choice. As always, there's multiple choices with what you can do, and it's best to do whatever fits the best need of your client or whatever tells the story in the clearest way. So that's our tutorial for today. That's how you make a donut chart. Please remember to subscribe to this channel. We got a lot of great tutorials coming up, more in a custom chart series, as well as a filtering series down the pipeline. We're excited to have you here and look forward to working with you more and providing more tutorials. Thanks.